Hello everyone, it's Linda from Linda Z's in Arlington Heights, Illinois. Ready for a good project today? We are going to have a lot of fun with these little cork zip pouches, little wallets, gift items, some really quick and easy things that you can do for yourself and for others. I'm going to give you some ideas of what to use them for. Um, you can see in front of me I have some beautiful, beautiful cork. I would highly recommend when you start this project that you start with the cork. It's so easy to sew on and I'm going to go through a couple of little tips and tricks that I think will help you. And then once you've mastered that, done a couple of them, you can just make these like popcorn. I mean, they'll be real, real easy to do. So um, before I get started, I want to show you what I will be making the project on. I'm not going to go into detail of step by step by step because we have put together a kit for you that I think is just wonderful. It has the um, amount of cork that you need for the project. In fact, a couple of them because we were cutting these out for the projects that I was making. Um, I just love the green. I think it's really, really pretty. Really good spring colors. There's a light kind of a white. There's a brown. This black one is absolutely stunning. It's a really cute little wallet you could take for a dinner and not take anything else. But what I did, because when you go to make some of these things, especially if you've been only doing one thing, say you're just a garment construction person, or maybe you're just a quilter, and then you go and diversify and do a little something different, it takes you a little while to go and find all your tools and do what you're gonna do. Well, rather than having to run all over, find every single little thing, I put everything in here for you. And we gave it to you on sale. We only have a limited amount of these kits, but I put in here what I thought was really important for you to get started and really have fun and make it quick and easy. So the, there's the uh, six inches of the cork is what you'll need. There's the um, zipper, which I'm gonna show you how to do right now. There's the tape that holds the zipper on. There's the pattern and there's the, cl the clasp that will hold it together. And I really think when you're first doing these, you should use, make, I'm sure you can get this up real close. See how the little Velcro is on here? Real simple, real easy. You can carry your change in here. You could put a credit card. You could put your discount coupons <laughs> or whatever it is that you use. I mean, it's just a really cool and it's very lightweight. Um, I think it's a great technique for you to learn how to do some things that you can then transfer over to leather. You could, which I didn't do on these, you could even embroidery on the back because you can see on my, everybody always asks me when I'm wearing these things, I don't know if you can see me on my microphone here, but I have this side, I think I have an embroidery flower. And then I did the back, which I normally try to do. Now this is just a real simple little denim jacket. I didn't make it. And all I did was embellish it. And you're seeing so much for spring with denim and embroidery, a little bit over the shoulder, maybe a little bit on the sleeve. Well, how can you do that if you only have just a sewing machine? You would not be able to do it. So we put together a phenomenal package for Bernina. Um, most of you know that when I do my piecing, I work on this machine. I have a couple. I'm very fortunate because we do carry every brand of sewing machine. So I'm very fortunate to be able to work on this machine. I love the five millimeter, it's a 5.5 oscillating hook. It is just sews beautifully. And through leather or through cork, it just goes like butter. Now, the beautiful part about this machine is that you can add onto it later an embroidery unit to do what? This kind of thing. But if you're just a quilter, and many people are, and you've seen me show this kit before, I love this kit. It's the Nomi kit. It's uh, I think it's called uh, I Love Sonomies. <laughs> and it's just the cutest. I've got it all. Um, we haven't actually quilted it yet, but we're getting ready. And I think we showed it in one of our last videos, but it was just so cute. I think Debbie actually had it out and was showing you. It's all out of flannel. I'll probably get it upside down, but <laughs> at least you can. Yep, I did. I can see them upside <laughs> now. Oh, no, I had it right. <laughs> okay, see the two little guys? Aren't they just darling? It's a real fast, quick, and easy quilt. And one of the most important things that I stress when you are doing a quilt is not just the piecing, but 
always, always, always put a label on it. So what we did is on this machine, there is an embroidery unit that you can get that can come with it. And we did the label and I think it's just such a sweet one. And it'll just, all the colors that are in the quilt. So if you had the machine and you were able to get an embroidery, we call it quilting in the hoop. You would not only be able to make your label, but you'd be able to quilt it on the machine. Now, this machine is normally a 7,000, I think it's 6,999, or it's up there. It's up in the six, $7,000 range for uh, retail. We have it on sale, and I think there are only two or three left, maybe three. This machine has been my favorite. It was only made in Switzerland for the Switzerland group, and then a lot of the uh, people over there knew that I loved this machine, and they sent us some, we sold every one of them. We got another batch in, and when this is gone, it will be gone. You, we won't be able to get them again. It's on sale because nobody can get it. I can say the price. It's $3,999. But, Nick, wait. <laughs> That's not all. <laughs> I, can I lift this up? I think I can. Look at what I have here. This is, I mean, it's, it's big. It's a big embroidery box. You can kind of see. And inside, if I were to take it out, this is actually the same size for one of our uh, limited editions. But you're getting an irregular embroidery unit that is $2,000 free for the first three people that call us. I know I sound like HTV or whatever that is right now, but I just am so excited about it. It's my absolute love of a machine. I cannot tell you how much I've done on this machine and how much I enjoy it because I not only piece with it, I do my crafts with anything that's straight stitch. It just goes through very, very easy. And then I do now, I would you would be able to have an embroidery unit that will help you quilt and do your labels at no charge. So we're giving that for the first, because it is a pre loved Some people have, uh, the machine is new. The um, embroidery unit has been certified, so it really is new. It has been a pre loved machine, because some people have traded up to the $2,500, $2,600 um, embroidery unit and these are beautiful embroidery units and most people that are using this only use the quilting in the hoop feature and then maybe the label feature and I thought well how about giving it with some of our uh, 720s so you have a great value so I hope you can take advantage of it we have not advertised this anywhere yet you're the first people to hear about it so come in and see us about this now that's my little spiel on that because I just wanted to show you how fun these would be to, to work with. This is a cork that I think is just beautiful. It's kind of a mid-range blue, and that's what this one was done with. And you can see I have done a zipper with it. There are some people that do cork and they seal the edges afterwards with a little flame. I don't do that. I, they don't fray, I've never had that. This is what I'm working on right now. It's kind of got a black, um, backing. They're all different weights and one of the things that I want to explain to you about cork is that we only carry the highest grade that's either made in Portugal or Italy. Portugal is your finest. This is a Portugal cork that is just, it's very fine so it would be a very lightweight wallet or a little coin purse. I mean it's it's really really spectacular. It would be a great evening purse. This is a little heavier. I think it's very elegant in a brown. There is um, kind of a blue-green that's got some silver in it, which I think would be gorgeous too with a, um, you know, any kind of a outfit that you're taking. This is the green that I just love for spring. I think it's a very, very pretty one. Um, this I call the robin's egg blue. Um, it's a little bit lighter than the other one. And then <clears throat> this black. Oh, this is a little bit different. This is the um, Portuguese the Portugal one too, like the other orange. Um, we don't have this one here, but we do have kits out of it. And I love it because it has a little magnetic snap. You can see how quick that was to go over. And we will be carrying those in the store. We have one right now. Some of you may have already been using it. It was a Sally tomato in the gold. If I were to do this one over again, I probably will because I love this fabric. I just took the little extra scraps. You always want to keep your scraps. I know I have a big bag of them here. Oh, here. 
Um, anything that I've worked on, you know, when you have extra pieces, um, leave them in a bag because you will use them. And this I use just for the tie of the zipper. But what I would have done differently is I would have taken this and made just a little bit smaller snap. And when I do the magnetic snaps, these two little prongs, I cut two slits in the pocket or wherever you're going to put it. And then I put those in. And most people press those prongs in. I like them to be pressed out. And I like to put a little bit of um, cardboard, very lightweight cardboard. I have a piece of that here somewhere too that um, will hold the backing because you don't want it to be too puckery. And I, I want to show you one that didn't turn out. <laughs> the, the sewing turned out beautiful. But I don't know, Nick, if you can get that up close because I want them to see the puckering around here. And the reason being is this was too heavy of a snap because we do carry the snaps also for this very, this is a beautiful vinyl and it was just too light for it. So if you're using some of the um, that orange one I showed you or the real fine black one. Don't use the real heavy snap. I would suggest strongly when you start that this is the way you do your clasp. You see the little Velcro here and here? And we put that, we put actually two of them in. You probably only need one. But we put two of them in the kit. Because, of course, we put the pattern and everything in there too. But we wanted you to have everything so you didn't have to run around and try and have you ever tried to put in snaps and you haven't done it for 20 years or 10 years or maybe you've never done it? Believe me, they're not easy to do. I will tell you that. You, that's why the magnetic snaps are so pro popular. The regular ones, we have a tool. I like the, um, <clears throat> it's down there, but I have a little hammer that I use. And I like the old hammer technique. Pull the, push the prongs through, put it on a wooden that's not going to be damaged and pound it and you will get a, a much better snap like this one. <clears throat> this is kind of an off-white and you see there's a little pocket right here and this snap goes right in there. You can kind of feel it. Just really, really goes in nice. And a, the little zipper up at the top and again you can put whatever you want to in here. So I really think they would, the smaller one would be great and we do carry those I believe in a, um, silver too. So that takes care of some of that. I want to show you exactly how to get started once you you bought your kit. Um, believe me, we don't want to be in the kit making business, but I, I coerced some of the gals here to um, help me make these kits so that you would have some success with this cork. I think many people stay away from fabrics and and um, things that they, they're not comfortable with. So step outside your zone a little bit. This is one of the easiest types of fabric to sew with because you don't have any raveling on your edges. And like I said, some people do take a lighter and they, you know, when they put these pieces together, they will um, sear them again. That's up to you whether you want to do it or not. So let's get started because I want to show you quickly uh, just a couple techniques. I'm not going to go through the entire um, process. There's three different pieces of fabric that you are going to use. And in the pattern, it tells you exactly how to cut them out. I do use, <clears throat> I love this Quilter Select. Um, the, I use the real big one for this because you can just easily open and close it. And it's weighted, so it gives you the right. At first, when I, I bought one of these, I thought it was too heavy. It is so great that it is so hard for me to go back to the little rotary cutters, the Ulfa. Um, there is a tiny one that you could use for cutting your opening because you're going to cut an opening in this uh, little purse to um, put your zipper in. And you could use this or you could use an X-Acto knife. Um, but when you cut out your first, your three pieces of cork, you're going to use your rotary cutter. Um, I like certain rulers. Um, this cork can be anywhere from about 24 inches to 27 or 30 some inches. It's all different because these are these corks that I had on top here. They are all beautiful designer cork. They are not some of those inexpensive ones that we get over in Asia. They are absolutely the most beautiful ones you'll ever find. I don't believe if you're going to spend time working on a project like this that you wouldn't have the best quality out there. And there's something like $70 a yard, some of them. So um, I, I wanted you to start with a small one so you could see how simple it was. And then if you really like it, then you can get into doing some more. You're going to cut three different pieces, a bigger, 
a smaller. This is this is called the body of your um, of your uh, purse. This is called the flap. It's the second one, and this is the pocket. And you can see that the pocket and the flap are almost the same size, only they're much, the pocket, of course, is much smaller. And in the pattern, it will give you the exact dimensions. I'm not going to go over all of that right now. One of the things that I do do when I start, now this happens to be a vinyl. I do not want you to start with vinyl. <laughs> it's, if you've done a lot of these, it'll be easy for you. But if you haven't, it's much more difficult. This is so simple and it goes so fast. And you could use an X-Acto knife. You take one of your, um, I took my Frizon pin, and that's when this is really a nice um, thing to have. I'm not going to use this because I've already marked it. But this is, normally I'm a little careful of these kinds of marking pins. But this one actually is very thin. And you can take a small ruler. I like um, this, or you know, this is the one I like. It's 3 by 12. And I believe that these are going to be on our website on sale. So I would encourage you, if you don't have this, uh, this was a good one. And first I mark it exactly down the center. Take a, you know, a marking pen. Or you could do, if you have a real dark one, like this. I don't know if you can get that real carefully. Uh, a lot of it has come off already. But I always want to mark the center. And I use, I love this for dark fabric. It's the clover, um, it's, a, it's a chalk and it's got a real fine sharp line. So it right, goes right on where you want the line to be. And it will brush off later, not too quick. You know, it'll stay on until you use it. Um, they have little, you know, these little marking chalk pens too. They're all right too. But you are going to mark them. Then when you're finished with your marking, you're going to take either your very, very fine scissors or you're going to take an X-Acto knife and you're going to go in there. And do you know what I'm doing right now? You know what this is? I've already done some of it. This is actually the opening for the zipper. And you could do it with a point or stitch it with a point. I find that the, there are quite a few changes I would make maybe. And, and what I'm going to do on this, um, now if you, can get the, if you can get that up real close, you'll see the difference. You see how this has got didn't get quite exact here and here. So this is why it's important to take a really nice sharp scissor and go in here. I'm going to go this way because it's a little easier to see and cut that little extra ledge off. Cut this little piece off and you don't have to worry about fraying. That's what's so beautiful about this. And now you've got it much, much cleaner. And when we turn it over, see how nice it is. Um, <clears throat> the I've cut this one already. In fact, you can see I took it out. And these openings are going to be for your zipper. Now, the next thing you're going to do is take your zipper, and the zipper will be in the kit. And you are going to have that zipper be, um, you're going to, it's going to be one of the exact sizes that you need. Don't worry that it looks too long, because you're going to cut those tails off afterwards. But what I did is I included, because so many people, when they go to make this, and then they can't find the material they need for the kit, and they go, oh, I'm not going to do it. And I want you to get started on it right away. You're going to take about five inches. I think we included 10, and that's more than enough, in um, each of your kits. And you're going to need about five inches for each side of the zipper. And you're going to take that, <clears throat> say this, we're using this zipper. You're going to take this and put it right down the center. I've already got it on here, but this is the orange one. You're going to smooth it real well with your fingers, and then you're going to pull it in the center. You're going to really pull, almost pull it to the point where it might come apart, like a Band-Aid. You know, you take a Band-Aid off, and then you're just going to peel it, bring that off, and it's sticky. And this is the sticky part right here. So I'm going to take this, and don't forget to put the zipper closure in the middle or somewhere in the zipper. Now this opening here is going to go right along. Don't worry if it's not totally straight. You want the edge to be straight, the edge of the cork to be straight along the um, edge of the zipper. And I'm going to put that in. Sometimes you can just close it a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. Now the, the uh, sticky part of this tape didn't come up right up to the edge, and that doesn't matter. What does matter is that the um, edge of your 
um, your cork is right over the sticky tape and is centered. You want to open it up a little bit because you don't want the zipper to be all the way up here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and I'm going to stitch all the way around this zipper. On the ends, I'm going to go over it once or twice. And then when I'm finished with that stitching, I'm going to go in and take my big scissors and I'm going to trim that to a scant a quarter inch or a little bit less than a quarter inch. So it isn't going to go into your seam when you put the wallet together. That's all there is to it. You take your zipper foot, take it over to your machine. Now, I don't do a straight stitch on this. I love the triple stitch because it gives you much more strength, and Bernina's triple stitch is absolutely beautiful. So I put that on, I put my zipper foot on, and then I put it either all the way to the right or to the left. And I'm going to start on the left side here, so then I would put that all the way to the right. And the zipper foot is going to run right along the edge of the cork. Now the, teeth, the feed dogs and the teeth on this machine work so beautifully that um, I do have a straight stitch Teflon foot that comes, or it doesn't come with it, but Bernina has made one. So since Bernina makes this foot, if you happen to have it, I would put it on. If you want to use your zipper foot for um, the zipper alone and then put your straight stitch foot on later when you're doing your seams, that would be okay too, or your uh, Teflon zigzag foot. I, for my project, I just use the zipper foot and then I use this number 10 edge foot. This is a five millimeter um, machine, so it doesn't have the little, what I call the eyeglass up there. It's a, it's a uh, computerized um, little screen that reads the foot. But if you have one of the bigger machines, then of course you would want to have your uh, 10C. Now the edge foot is just a beautiful because it just gives you such, if you notice, any of these stitchings up close, you will see that every single edge has been edge stitched around it, and it's very fine and very, very nice. It looks just as nice on the back as it does on the front. Now you can see on this little one, I put a tiny little snap. Um, I think it was much better, and we do have some colored ones that are kind of fun too. I'm not going to go into the rest of this, but um, because all the instructions are in there, but what I am doing, I'm doing there are, we have clubs that we teach every month and our clubs, we go step by step by step. I think it's so helpful. I'm one of these people that I like to have uh, very specific directions. I like to know the inches and, you know, how much, where I should put it up, what kind of clips I should be using. Um, you know, I use all three sizes of the Wonder Clips. And on this particular project, you're going to use the pink and the green because they're, they're really good. So if you subscribe to our clubs, it is the best bargain you've ever seen, and it will go step by step by step. If you don't subscribe to the clubs and you still want to do this project, absolutely, and say you have a lot of cork at home, go to it. You, you'll have some, a lot of fun with it. These are the um, zippers that are by Annie. We carry every single thing that by Annie makes. So we have every single color. So say that you're going to do, you know, some lime green and you really want to get into the, some colors for the summer. And then maybe you want to do the stitching in lime green and maybe you want to put an orange um, flap for your uh, pocket. Um, go ahead. That's a lot of fun. But don't do that until you're really comfortable with making your first one. Get the kit. We have a limited supply. Each color that I showed you, I know we have at least three. So you can uh, either call the store, come into the store, or they will be on the website until they sell out. Um, I hope you will try that. I just think it's a wonderful little project to get you into working with some other technique. Um, quickly, you will want to use either a leather needle or a Microtex. I like the, let's see if I got my needle thing around here. I do like the Chrome um, Floriani Microtex. I think it's just a great needle and believe it or not I did all of it except when I got into the leather. I've got a real thick red leather here that I'm going to try and that you would need a leather needle. So in summary, get a kit, have some fun, buy the 720, <laughs> get the free embroidery and not only will you be doing cork and leather but you can do embroidery on the cork. You could do what I've done on my shirt. It's not a real heavy embroidery, it's very light. Uh, just have some fun with some of these projects. And like I said before, 
step outside the lines. <laughs> okay, have a great, great week, you guys. Thanks so much for joining us, and we will see you back here next Thursday morning.